It is the year 1851, and August Mariette, a French Egyptologist, is making his way up to a tower of massive boulders in preparation to use explosives on them. At the point when the residue clears from the explosion, however, an exceptional underground maze from over a long time back at last uncovers itself, and the baffling stone boxes that Mariette finds inside the design are shocking, regardless of whether they present an apparently unsolvable riddle. The man found peculiar boxes covered underneath Egypt, and their starting points are perplexing researchers. But before we get started, the best way to keep up with the most recent and greatest historical journeys content is to subscribe to our channel. Let's get started. In particular, Mary added uncovered an old graveyard known as the Serapium of Saqqara. This milestone lies around 15 miles south of Giza, which plays host to Egypt's most popular pyramid site. Furthermore, the design of the underground entombment chamber is essentially that of a burrow bored into the stone of a mountain. Situated off that path in the interim are a progression of chambers or niches. The Serapion is truly unique thanks to the enormous stone boxes that are housed within those chambers. The repositories are slashed from stone 10 are genuinely gigantic, with the biggest among them tipping the scales at almost 90 tons. In addition, they have yet another remarkable feature, almost perfect symmetry. Every one of the edges and surfaces of the crates have been cut in meticulous straight lines. Truth be told, when Mariette found these puzzling compartments, however, tragically, everything except one of the 25 had been recently stolen from by gray burglars. Furthermore, going to this situation, one inquiry actually remained. What are these stupendous boxes been utilized for? It would have required a lot of work to make them all things considered, and the Egyptians would scarcely have gone to all that difficulty without a particular reason as a primary concern. Yet what was it well returned to the confusing things presently? On the whole, let's figure out somewhat more about Marriott himself. The Egyptologist appeared on the scene in 1821, and he was brought into the world in boulogne sur mer a French coastline town in the north of the country that neglects the English Channel. In 1850, however, Marriott was commissioned by the French government to travel to Egypt in search of the finest historical manuscripts from the Theosophic and Arabic Syriac Coptic Canna traditions. After that, once he found the texts he needed, he bought them. The French needed these relics for their historical center assortments, which were at that point perceived as among the best on the planet. However, while Marriott set out on his first process to Egypt in quite a while, mission didn't meet with progress. One reason was that he was unable to locate the kind of manuscripts that he had been instructed to collect. Furthermore, fundamentally, his absence of involvement of performing such an undertaking was at the foundation of his disappointment. In any case, Marriott couldn't mull over the disgrace of getting back to France with basically nothing. As a result, the Frenchman began looking around for a different prize that might earn him the same respect in his home lamp. He eventually developed friendships with members of the local Bedouin tribes. And as it turned out, Marriott was led by those Arabs from the desert to a fantastic discovery that would ensure that his name would endure through time. Marriott was specifically pointed in the direction of Saqqara, which is south of Cairo. This enormous site was once the necropolis or graveyard for the city and for Memphis, the one-time capital of old Egypt, and Saqqara is where large numbers of Egypt's most popular structures from ancient history stand with the well-known Pyramid of Djoser and its particular step structure among them. However, when Marriott was directed to the site by the amicable Bedouins, he was not exactly intrigued. All he saw at first was a grim desert scene interspersed exclusively by sand rises, in time, however, he detected the head of one sphinx looking out over the ground. Then at that point, remarking on Penn's message Marietta pined, did it not appear to be that weird goodness that composed this sentence, to assist us with rediscovering after more than 18 centuries, the well-known sanctuary committed to Serapis questioning it was inconceivable. This buried sphinx was one of 15 others I had seen, and the evidence shows that Alexandria and Cairo built a road leading to the Memphis Serapian with them. Marriott went on to say, it did not seem any possible to leave to others the credit and profit of exploring this temple, whose remains a fortunate chance had allowed me to discover, and whose location would be known from now on. I could not imagine doing so. The sand on which I stood undoubtedly contained numerous priceless fragments, statues, and undiscovered texts. Even though Mariette decided that more than just human labor was required, he still needed a team of workers to finish his excavations of the site, even after he had recruited 30 local men for the job. Specifically, after Mariata delocated what he believed to be the Serapian's entrance, he encountered an impenetrable wall of rock that, regrettably, could not be manually vanquished. In the end, then at that point, 
the cunning Frenchman concluded that a decent estimated blast was the response that might appear to be risky, and shooting your direction into an uncommon and old site would scarcely fulfill the demanding guidelines of current paleontology, all things considered. In any case, this was the mid-19th 100 years and archaic exploration in Egypt at the time was full of rivalry. So in 1851, Mariette at long last remained at the entry of the Serapion of Saqqara. Then on November 12, he entered the passage that had been naturally introduced to the mountain, where he went over an unbelievable gold mine of old bronze tablets, sculptures, and burial chambers. Frustratingly for Mariette, however, grave looters had beaten him to these finds, and just a single stone casket had been left intact. However, there was likewise a practically flawless burial chamber, one that had a place with ruler Kim, was it brought into the world in around 1303 BC. Ken was it had come down as Pharaoh from 1279 BCE until his passing at the time of around 90 in 1213 BC. And his stone coffin had really been tracked down under the heap of rock that the impact had made. Fortunately for Mariette, the item had survived almost unscathed. Inside the final resting place, in the meantime, were the embalmed stays of Kem Wizard, who had been decorated in a stupendous way. The essence of the pharaoh had been canvassed in a gold cover, for example, while his body brandished extravagant gems. The burial chamber contained many sumptuous grave products, as well, however one of those bizarre stone boxes. Indeed, those baffling items were obviously found inside the Serapion of Saqqara, which is isolated into two unmistakable parts. The foremost hall and offices of the Serapion are the more prominent vaults, while a subsequent section total with recesses is known as the lesser vaults. The two regions are cut from the strong sandstone bedrock. The more noteworthy vaults passage, which runs for above and beyond 1100 feet additionally has a bordering series of chambers, and it's there that the containers were found. Additionally, Ken was the one who gave the order for the construction of the smaller vaults. Around then, the pharaoh was only a sovereign as his dad Ramus is the second was administering over old Egypt. Then at that point, approximately 600 years after the fact, Pharaoh Santak, the main arranged the development of the more prominent vaults, and the crate is finished with removable covers commonly weighed from 60 to 80 tons or more, with each having been cut from a solitary section of stone. The cutting is amazingly exact to with the covers, which each weigh 30 tons, all fitting practically impeccably onto the stone underneath. However, Marriott's large sarcophagi were empty, so it wasn't immediately clear what they might have once held. However, in the end, the real purpose of those enormous boxes has been discovered through research into the Egyptian religious beliefs and practices of the time when the vaults were constructed. Specifically, it appears to be that they filled in as final resting places for the custom interment of expired bulls. Because they were pit bulls, these weren't just any cattle. They were sacred. There was a widespread belief at the time that bulls were the deities' reincarnations. The animals then became immortal and assumed the form of a fusion of the gods Osiris and Epis when they died. This blend of Osiris and Epis was known as Serapis, from which the words or Appium is determined. So the Serapian had Saqqara could be where people, yet additionally creatures were covered. Also, it's interesting to note that when the Greeks took control of Egypt, the cult of Serapis was carried over from the ancient Egyptian dynasties. This period is known as the Ptolemaic realm. In fact, Pharaoh Ptolemy Isoter ordered that both the Egyptians and their Greek conqueror as should worship Serapis, this order came in the 3rd century BC, when the ruler was trying to bring the different peoples together. One way to do this was to demand that the two groups worship the same god, in point of fact, when looking for a bull with the appropriate markings. In addition, the ancient Egyptians held the belief that a genuine EPI's bull had to be born from a cow that would not be able to produce any additional calves. In time, however, an electrical jolt would strike the mother to create a hallowed youngster. What's more, after this worshipped creature was found, it would be conveyed along the Nile to Memphis Brilliant in the Brilliant Safe House. However, what befell Mariette after his disclosure of the Serapion of Saqqara? Since then, Mariette enjoyed a highly successful career as a leading Egyptologist until his death in 1881. That monumental find marked a significant turning point in his fortunes, as the Egyptians specifically hired him and made him the official conservator of Egyptian monuments. He likewise figured out how to uncover a lot of additional structures and curios from the old period of the pharaohs. However, not everyone agrees that those enormous granite boxes contained the sacred EPI's bulls and a single sarcophagus. What's more, one of the individuals who was questions is Aid Yul herself. She has been to the tombs you see, and the stone boxes contain aspects of both that she finds perplexing.
First and foremost aid you'll believe that the size of the containers was bizarre, as they were all a lot bigger than expected to house preserved bowls. Guidula has also mentioned that Mary only found empty boxes, and she has personally confirmed that they do not contain anything. At last, then this implies that nobody has really seen the preserved remaining parts of a bowl inside one of those alleged stone coffins. Gaidul consequently battles that there is no decisive proof the crates at any point contained any consecrated creatures. Additionally, despite Myriad's discovery of mummified bowls at the Saqqara site, none of them were contained within those stone containers. All things considered, the 28 dairy cattle that he found were contained in a lot more modest wooden caskets. That is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.